later we'll be at the uh, La area to share with you some uh, Father's Day gifts as uh, Father's Day will be on Sunday. And happy Father's Day in advance to all our fathers out there, potential fathers, and also those who are playing a uh, fatherly role in the lives of many people. If you're admiring what I'm wearing this morning, it's by Sonar Fashions. It's in Tamale, and it's uh, 246 590 that's 0246-590-162 or 059-649-961, that's 059-649-961. <clears throat> On the front page of the BNFT this morning, we're reading and learning that no revenue loss has been recorded with ICOMS according to the GRS uh, Amisha Dai. It says uh, 490 million CDs earned in 17 days and 1 billion projected for June. Data consolidation ongoing to boost revenue generation, former minister, and coronavirus downs oil revenue by 82% in the first quarter. Also, we're told of declining first quarter revenues on the front page. And if you buy the BNFT, the Business and Financial Times, you'll be able to grab all the details that you need. The Ghanaian Times this morning says, COVID-19, no bed shortage in Ghana. Ghana Health Service refutes claim. Okay, uh, 10,000 schools to benefit from 219 million education improvement project. New ICOMS bags 490 million Ghana cities in two weeks. Reopening of SHS is on Monday, June 22. And government rolls out COVID-19 safety protocols as president tax chas to ensure strict adherence. Daily Guide. A two ACN's proposal to pay back what the state says he took from them wrongfully uh, has been shot down by the uh, uh, Attorney General, and we're told that a fresh proposal has been looked at. NDC participates in EC pilot exercise, and basic education gets Gallup boost. Um, NPP outdoors Nana Baumia picks MPs tomorrow, and the, that um, acclamation will happen, but tomorrow... It's a big day for the new Patriotic Party. All the action will be here on your election command center. 3 FM 92.7 TV3, Onya FM, Onya TV, Akuma FM, Connect FM in Takradi. Daily graphic, government invests $219 million in basic schools projects to improve quality education. Ghana Health Service amends COVID-19 policy to what? By the graphic and find out, 102,000 MPP delegates decide fate of 308 aspirants, 47 women in contention, and many more who have been asked to go unopposed. Um, the party is here to explain why. The Finder newspaper, 290 million for education improvement, 10,000 low performing basic schools, according to President Kufado. ICOMS generates 490 million in 17 days, states not losing revenue. Government, uh, 2020 COVID-19 treatment centers not being used. Uh, Dr. Patrick Kumar is the Director General of the Ghana Health Service. And NI, NHI pays service providers $598.9 million in 2020. My guest this morning is Mr. George AUC. He is the National Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization. And his better half tomorrow uh, is being contested fiercely in the Cape Coast North constituency. Mr. Philip London and three others are contesting. So uh, you can imagine the sitting MP being contested, but uh, it is well. Malik Basintali is a Savannah Regional Communications Officer of the NDC. Malik, welcome. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Sir George, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you. And before we get in, I'll start my a campaign that I started yesterday. I'll reiterate it today. I'm saying that we are asking for social distancing to be adhered because the numbers we have seen are shooting up. Truck trucks and taxis have been pressed and pushed, and we are strictly enforcing that every truck truck that you sit in, I'm sure you know that the numbers have reduced so you can properly space out. Taxis, you can space out. Even motorbikes that have seats for two are now using one seat. But if you go to those intercity big coaches, Mm. including our own Ayalolo and Metro Mass Transit, all of them, they all pack people in there, full capacity of the buses. Some don't even wear the face mask. So the question I'm asking is this. Are we on a certain time? Are we sitting on a time bomb? Because the truth of the matter is that if you ask me to practice social distancing before I get my ticket to board the bus, if you ask me to practice social distancing while I have my ticket ready to board the bus in a queue, if you ask me to wash my hands with soap and other running water because you provided Veronica bucket, does it then make sense to you that after I've done all of these things on the ground, 
I get on the bus and there's nothing like social distancing on the bus and everybody is watching. The bus companies are not being responsible. The enforcement agencies are equally looking on unconcerned and we keep complaining and saying that we are living with the virus. We're joking. We are joking and we are joking with our lives one and all because you may not know who has traveled from one city or the other in such circumstances and has come to visit you. You can't tell that somebody has COVID just by looking at their faces. You cannot tell unless they test. And we do know that over 90% of the people who have the virus are asymptomatic. They don't show signs. I could have it. I'm not, I could not be showing signs. So, Mr. President, good morning to you. This is a passionate appeal day two of uh, the, the campaign that we've started here. We want to see social distancing being practiced on our trains and on our big buses. We want to see it. They are not bigger because if trotters are losing, taxis are losing, they could bend their back a bit. In fact, even planes, airplanes, local flights are practicing social distancing. So why can't they? Mr. Vice President, good morning to you, sir. Alaji. Today is Friday. We'll go for Juma. But I want to appeal to your heart and also to the transport minister. Honorable Isiyama, good morning to you. I beg you, look at this and look at it very well. Because if we perish, we perish together. If we live, we live together. You have said, Mr. President, that you know how to bring back the economy. What you don't know how to do is to bring back the lives. These are lives that are being put at a greater risk. Let's push for social distancing to be observed on the big buses as well. Good morning. George, you are National Communications Director of NADMO. This is disaster looming. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Good morning to you. Good morning to your production crew. Good morning uh, to our viewers. And my brother, uh, Basintali from the Savannah, uh, well, welcome, bro. <laughs> Yeah, Johnny is a good is a good crusade. Uh, I think I watched it on your channel mm. uh, that uh, the Ale Alolo and Metro Mass are not practicing uh, the social distancing. Mm. In fact, you even showed it. Mm. Not just uh, the VIP yes, as well. Yes, yes, mm. yes. And and uh, what better? I thought if private trotters are observing and practicing the strict mm. rule, mm. Uh, government vehicles should be in the forefront mm -hmm. okay government vehicles and the bigger vehicles uh, should be in the forefront that one another uh, should be given to the director generals of mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. uh, organizations or MDs uh, to ensure the strict enforcement mm -hmm. uh, if that can even be controlled Johnny mm -hmm. uh, you can send you know we know where they move from mm -hmm. okay we can dispatch the police uh, officers to those places mm -hmm. on duty mm -hmm. uh, to go and ensure that every vehicle is observing the social distancing mm -hmm. protocol, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, government vehicles, and then the VIP uh, too. So, we, 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 because we like it or not, the, the numbers are still going up, mm -hmm. okay? And now it is come to stay that uh, the communal spread is in the forefront mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. okay? And so if the communal spread is increasing, uh, it means all of us are at risk. And, and basic safety protocols that have been put in place. Mm -hmm. If we cannot observe them, uh, then it's like we are, we are actually uh, uh, leaving something out. Okay. And so let's, let's ensure the strict enforcement of that. I, mm -hmm. I doff my hat for the police and the military who are uh, on the roads checking these things because last i saw them trying to pull somebody out from a vehicle mm -hmm. who wasn't wearing the mask, the mask right. yeah and then uh, i watched a video where some those who are not wearing it mm -hmm. or wearing it but not wearing it properly right i also been asked to do some mini job. that one i have a challenge whether mm -hmm. it's within the law, the law to do right, that yeah. but let's use the law but then uh, all of us should begin to adhere to that you, I'm, I'm in support of you, your you are, thank you you are a national communication director of nadmo what promise can you make to us because this will somehow fall within your purview. Oh, definitely, definitely. Mm. So what we're, promise are you making to us? Not just VVIP, OA, all yes. of them. Now, what, what it means is not more we will dispatch some of our officers to make uh, mm. follow up, go and do inspections on that, and then mm. we can uh, take their report up. Uh, okay. Because we, in the COVID fights mm. against COVID, 
the Ghana Health Service is in the forefront. Mm -hmm. But once you've alerted us on this looming danger, mm -hmm. uh, it is our responsibility as a uh, disaster management organization to take a step mm -hmm. to ensure that we support Ghana Health Service okay. uh, to nip that in the bud. Masintale, yeah. take a bite on this one. No, no, good morning. I'm sure you and came by bus. Yeah, well, well, maybe you drove, yeah. but you've seen what I'm talking absolutely, about. Absolutely, absolutely. Good morning and good morning to your viewers. I think that the fight against COVID-19 is gradually moving into different dimensions mm. that must appear as a threat to we, we indigenous of this country. I think that, first of all, many of those being infected now mm -hmm. are the frontline workers. Right. And I mean, it, is, it, it must be a worrying matter to us all. I mean, just yesterday, I was reading through the media headlines, and some media men mm -hmm. have been infected right. and have been isolated. I mean, and this is, this is a worrying threat that mm. we must all be concerned about. I've heard of medical workers, I've heard of doctors, I've heard of contact tracers and what have you, all mm -hmm. being infected with COVID-19 mm -hmm. and to an extent that the almighty mm -hmm. health minister, mm -hmm. I mean, was attacked by, by, by this pandemic, regardless of the fact that, yes, everybody is, can be attacked and mm -hmm. can, I mean, suffer the pandemic, but it means that something is not going on well. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, contact tracers, medical officials and what have you, mm -hmm. like he's an admiral communications officer and he claims that, I mean, a lot of exercises are going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, should be people that, I mean, should be distanced and far away from getting infected in this virus. I mean, mm -hmm. how would a layman see it if mm -hmm. the almighty contact tracer mm -hmm. is being infected with, with, with COVID-19 and, and what have you? But you see, yesterday, President Mahama raised a very critical point. And in his GM yeah, yeah, life, talking about my, ba my I mean, bus, my bus, um, uh, no, no, I'm coming to bus. Rate. So, so let's, let's go to it I'm first, then, to then we can talk about in, GM. In, in, mm -hmm. You see, in the bus issue, mm -hmm. it is all boils down to lots of sensitization. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was the point I wanted to raise here. Okay. Because there are a lot of people that still do not even understand what social distancing means. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that do not know the a number of meters you need to distance yourself from the next the mm -hmm. person closer to you. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that still do not know how to even use their masks. And Johnny, mm -hmm. you go to the market, you go to the bus mm -hmm. stations, and you see, I was bored in a bus. Mm -hmm. I saw someone pull out a nose mask mm -hmm. that had been crumpled. And I mean, from looking at it in the person's bag, you could realize that automatically that nose mask has not been washed for more than, I mean, two weeks. Because the person pulled it off, off the bus and was like, here's my nose mask. And then wore it. I mean, I even watched a, a media reportage where they were, I mean, reporting and, I mean, getting in touch with people and mm. interacting with them. And they asked someone, where's your nose mask in the bus? Mm. And the person said, oh, my nose mask, me share. Then the person pulled it out. Then mm. wore it. I mean, so it automatically means that. After using it, the person puts it in the bag, mm -hmm. use it the next day. But I mean, a lot of sensitization ought to go into things like this. You right. need to train them that look, <clears throat> once you bought the bus, once you go to the marketplace, once you use it, the re reusable ones, when you get home, wash it, iron it, press it with the person iron and what have you. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we need to invest a lot of energies and exercises in. We okay. need to go to the streets, go to the bus stations, tell them what to do, <clears throat> tell them what social distancing means. Mm -hmm. Speak to the trotro drivers, tell them what social distancing means. I think the tell them drivers I mean. are doing very well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very, absolutely. My, my difficulties with yeah. the buses, yeah, the big see. buses. So we need to, we need to speak to the them. Absolutely, yeah. we need to speak to them. We, but you see, in state transports like STC, mm. they, they adhere to it. Okay. VIP, I mean, some other bus stations mm. are also are, do adhere to some of these protocols. Mm. But I mean, they, we must do a lot. A lot must be done. Mm. I mean, the provision of even nose mask and what have you. If, if it doesn't mind, you can even add it to the bill right. of the person. I right. mean, so once somebody boards your bus, you give the person an automatic nose mask, mm. you give the person an automatic hand sanitizer, mm. and at the end of the day, I think that some of you will be able to limit it. That's a good point. You know, yeah. the, malls, the malls do that. Right. When yeah. you are entering yeah. the mall, yeah. if you don't have a nose mask, they no will sell you. They will sell it there. For you, right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. otherwise you won't go. You won't go. It's a good I, thing. I, yeah, I yeah. shop from a supermarket yeah. where, as soon as you enter, what you touch is what you buy. Yeah. Wow. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. So they good. tell you good. outside. You are in a queue outside, yeah. socially distanced. Yeah. Then occasionally an attendant That's comes good. to say, when you go in there, the prices are on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The products you can clearly see what they yeah. are. As soon as you touch it. That's what you, you buy do. it because we don't know what you're bringing. <laughs> what so bringing. You That's a good one. So they put maybe one. four people at a yeah. time in the in yeah. the shop. The they go day. around. Once you touch it, yeah. you buy it. You buy it. That's all, yeah, so. you touch it, you you affect it, you buy it. You it's it it's one of the things Johnny we still yeah. must do because you go just like you've raised mm. and you find people raising drinks yes. Yes. to check it. Yes. Look at it, look at and it, touch it, touch it, it uh, and put yeah. it back there. <laughs> then go to the next <laughs> object. And I mean, yeah. even clothing, people yeah. still go to test yes. it. Yeah. Yes, they wear it 
they change it and they hang it again. <laughs> then they say, they, I mean, so these are some of the sensitization programs. Yeah. Okay. Let's invest a lot of us now. Let's let's know what you think about it. Uh, and this is all for for our own sakes to protect all of us from the virus that has become uh, a global pandemic. Join us on our WhatsApp lines and let's know what you think uh, about this topic. Should the buses uh, practice social distancing? Should they not? I think they should. Yes, sure. We have agreed here that they should. But um, what's been your experience boarding any of these buses? And did you complain? What was the response of the managers of these buses, the conductors, the drivers? What did they say to you? Let's know uh, so we can sample your views around the world. But page, uh, the center spread of the Daily Graphic says, we are investigating missing cocaine, according to the GRA. The Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority is carrying out investigations into the handling and storage of the missing 100.10 grams of a whitish substance substituted to be cocaine, which was seized in a joint operation by security operatives at the Poglo border post in the Volta region on June 5, 2020. A press statement issued by the GRA last Wednesday said, uh, when concluded, the outcome of the investigations and the findings of the police forensic um, laboratory will be made public. The, the, the report is signed by Assistant Commissioner, uh, Communication and Public Affairs of the GRA, Mrs. Florence Asante, said so far her outfit had exhibited transparency in the handling of the case. Now, I'm sure you do remember that they are uh, at the neck, or if you like, there was a back and forth between them, the GRA and the NACOP, who refused to uh, take the items that were seized because the vehicle in which the, the suspected cocaine was found in was not part of it. Again, they said because the quantum had reduced. The question is, uh, this was in the hands of our security and the quantum reduced. George? It must, it must be a Herculean task uh, to have people trusted to hold things in trust for us <laughs> to now come back to say we can't find a certain portion of it. It's, it's, Where did the cocaine go? Yeah. We have seen cocaine turn into cocaine yes, and flour before. Yes, yes. And then soda, uh, whatever. Mm, soda. Uh, in fact, when I, you know, I think about the beginning of the week or somewhere there about, mm. I saw that headline that there's a missing cocaine. Mm. And I said, hey, is this thing again? <laughs> I thought it's a thing of the past. Uh, but we, 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 we can't be Johnny to trust our security agencies to do the right thing. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes uh, some of our security officers disappoint us. Uh, and NACOP was right. Mm. You know, if you are bringing exhibits, mm. it must be as it was. Complete. We, complete when mm. you seize it. And so we are taking custody of it. Mm. And we must take custody of what you see. If, if your report shows you took about 10 grams of mm. coke, mm. then that is what you must hand over to us. If you bring us 6 grams mm -hmm. and we make the mistake of taking it, mm -hmm. it means it got missing or lost in our custody. And mm. we must account for mm. it. And so NACOB uh, did the right thing. The agency that actually sees the two, mm. the vehicle must also be sent there. Very, right. Because that is going to help them do some uh, investigation and tracing to the mm -hmm. owner mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, product. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's unfortunate. I felt so bad uh, when I heard that this thing has happened mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. uh, in the custody of our security agencies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the best. Let's uh, NACOB or whichever invested, the CID mm -hmm. or national security solve, mm -hmm. uh, go into this matter and look for the people who actually seized it. Mm -hmm. And then how come... Uh, some got missing along the line. Mm. Okay, mm. people must not be spicy when it happens this way, Johnny. The the, the corporates get away because we we'll play political balls with right. it. We we'll play political balls with it. So mm. he will just go take the booty, relax in his uh, couch or uh, whatever, and then myself and Basintali will be playing the ball here with mm. you as the referee. You get it. <laughs> then he is enjoying the booty. Mm. Okay. So let's begin to, yes, we can play the ball, mm -hmm. but let's hold the people who caused this loss responsible. Right. And if we need to prosecute them, we must do that. Mm -hmm. The GRE officers who are there at the border post mm -hmm. uh, with the customs officers, if there's a police officer there, mm -hmm. all officers who were there when the uh, stuff was seized must all be brought to book. Mm -hmm. A thorough investigation done and people punished for it. Mm. If we don't do that, we are not going to make any progress. We will continue to have cocaine in the custody of the police turned mm. into cocaine. Mm. And then we'll be playing ball. Cocaine turned into soda. Mm. And then we'll be accusing uh, George A.C. Mm. or His Excellency the President. Mm. 
when they were not there. Yes, the back stops with them. Mm. Okay, that is why then they must take that decision. That mm. look, the investigation should go on. Mm -hmm. If it was Officer A, B, C, D, let's fire them. Okay, mm. and then prosecute them in addition. The, the punitive it's, it's, this thing must be serious. It's easier said than done. I remember that yes, when the it's, MV it's Benjamin easy. case yeah. came up. Yeah. Same was said. Yes. I, I don't know if uh, that was properly done. Get in it. There was a committee. Yes. After, you know, it went through committee investigations mm. and other things. Uh, still, you know, ultimately, mm. <laughs> we had challenges. You get it? Mm. Because we, we, we had uh, some guy, well, that popular guy, came out mm. at that time. Right. There was this young guy who was at the center of the mm. whole piece, mm. you know. Everything ended. I think he went into prison. Yeah, for some, the, Yes, mm. Tagore. Mm. You get it. Yeah, but some people thought there were more people than him alone. Okay. You get it. And so if we get to the bottom of the matter, mm. it is. And last one, Johnny. Mm -hmm. I just pray that uh, some of our officers, if you watch investigative pieces mm. and co, they, they have people in the inside. Okay. People in the inside. By mm. in the inside means the security agents okay. who aid and abet mm. with these criminals. Okay, And so they know when it gets there, definitely they are not going to get their thing uh, out. Let's begin to do that thorough inside investigation mm. to you know, get these people out so that we can win the fight against okay. uh, drug uh, trafficking. Malik, two state institutions trusted with the power to ensure that this does not happen at each other's throat. GRA is already <laughs> retreating and saying that, look, we don't want to do a media war with NACOM, um, but we are investigating, and when we are done, the investigations will be, will be shown to you. Are you surprised? You see, Johnny, somebody must answer for this whole issue. It is not a matter that should, like my brother said, must be debated, mm. must be spoken a lot about. It's not a matter that must be treated like just any other normal matter. Mm. I mean, things, this rate at which things are going missing mm. and this country is becoming worrying. How do you mean? And I think that, mm. I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. I think that, yes, we must be a lot more sensitive to issues like this. Mm. I mean, cocaine with $200,000, mm. not just cocaine, right. with $200,000, that's right. with a vehicle has been impounded by the Customs Division. Mm. And according to the push and pull, the, the, the Narcotic Board Department said, you should bring it to our custody per mm. the act mm. and then skip it for investigations to go on. Yeah. This department said, no, let's keep it here. Mm. Let's do the investigations. I mean, there was that push and pull in this whole matter. And at the end of the day, you still cannot find some portions mm. of those exhibits. And now, grams. yes, some are moving away. Some are, you see, we must be sensitive to this. And I think that the government must take a strict interest mm. in a matter like this. You see, Johnny, we arrest an ordinary, let's say, I don't want to call it ordinary, mm. but let, in this context, let me say an ordinary weed smoker mm. with just one ton, mm. okay, with just one stick. Mm. And such a, that person is treated, I mean, manhandled, mm. taken to, 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 to courts, mm. they prosecute such a person, they imprison him. I mean, with just one strike. Then you arrest another person mm -hmm. with a whole V8 and, I mean, dozens and lots of tons of cocaine. Mm. And then at the end of the day, like you said, you say some have been missing, push and pull. At the end of the day, you don't even trace the case again. That whole case will be turned around. Things are getting missing and people must be held responsible. What, 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 does, the, what does the head? I mean, mm. we're in this country mm. where a committee was also set up. We vested our interest in it. We vested lots of, I mean, a lots of powers and whatever in it. It went into the pits. Mm. A similar activity of seizing gold and what have you, gold went missing. And you remember that in some tapes and what have you, other things like galamse, I mean, excavators, other things like monies, other things like weapons and what have you, went missing. And when there was a documentary to expose some of these things by Anas, I remember Anas, mm. it turned out that yes, the person has been moved away from the committee as a secretary. But investigations, what happened? The person still works at the presidency. And we are ongoing. And so I think that, you see, all these state agencies take inspiration from some of these things. Because, you see, if we're in this country where it was captured on live video, mm. that this person was doing that, this person was doing this, and it's evidential mm. that excavators, that gold, that money cannot be traced and what have you, and nothing is done about it by the statesman of this country, it then gives room for some of these things to continue. Mm. And, you see, like I said, somebody must answer. The, what is the, the GRA says they're doing is the the investigation. Absolutely. So we're hoping somebody. that the investigation will... But, you see, what reports are I read, I don't know how authentic they were. Mm. They said, I mean, the cocaine could have been swept. And what have you? Uh, I read a report like how? that. I mean, I read a report like that, that the cocaine could have been swept was, away, was it parts of it. Or, I mean, that is simply what I can understand. 
<laughs> and our interest should be in the kind of, I mean, the model or the personalities involved in some of these things. And it must, I mean, the ridiculing, the, all these things end up causing lots of international embarrassments to this country. Hmm. And we must be sensitive to things like this. It is something the government must vest lots of interest in. It is something the government must call people. Hmm. Heads must roll. And things like this cannot continue. Else, it will only inspire a lot of other people like other issues have inspired people. Mm. It will only inspire a lot of people like other things continuously on a daily basis to be left under the carpet mm. all in the name of politics. And so it is in the interest of my brother, like he said, mm. let's not do lots of politics with this. Mm. Let's name and shame people. You must let your government be accountable. You must let your government be sensitive. Mm. And the commander in chief must take this up. And at the end of the day, let's get a resource of investigation. George, so, yeah. the borders are closed. Yeah. The, the president's yeah. directive. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a vehicle that is not essential. It's not carrying food or medicines. Yeah. It's a V8 with a foreign registration number okay. that came through the borders. Yeah. And, and is that normal? It's not normal. It's mm. not normal. Because I'm told, I, I wouldn't mention names, that in the past mm. there was a minister of state uh, in Ghana who mm. went to Togo uh, to meet some business investors and co. And, you know, when they were coming, they tried to join his convoy mm. back. And, you know, he said, no, uh, you cannot mm. be because I don't have the authority to bring you through mm. this place. You mm. get it. Mm. And the border officers also ensured they didn't follow him. And so the minister had the meeting that couldn't enter Ghana with the business investors. Mm. You get it. Mm. Because at that time, there was a certain rule of engagement that he needed to have followed. Mm -hmm. and, and it was good. Mm -hmm. You get it. And so, if you're coming, because it's a V8, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if he's an, an international diplomat. If there's an exception for mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. you must search. That's the challenge that sometimes we have, mm -hmm. uh, especially our security officers. Right. Once you are a big person, they find it reluctant to search you thoroughly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. Because you go and ask, do you know me? <laughs> no, no. Do the your big job. men always ask, do you, do you know, know me? They do, do they do. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes they're also scared that, look, this guy, yes, you know, by the time you say me. Jack, you get it. But because of yes, some of yes, these things. Yes, a constable yes, or a yes. corporal. The V8 pulls up. Fat man <laughs> sitting there. Do, do you know me? Johnny, you, you know sit me? in there. No, no, yeah, don't do that. Don't do you know me? That is, you know, that kind of question is a bit nauseating. Mm. Okay, we have a case in the UK where uh, a junior officer flagged the vehicle of uh, a whole commander, right? Mm. Uh, because when he tested, she, she directed the gun, he was over speeding. Mm -hmm. He stopped him and then. Took him through the processes. Mm. You get it. That's a commander in in in, in a, a zone. Okay. Mm. Mm. So we need to begin to learn uh, some of these things. Johnny, let me uh, say this thing. My brother says some which is interesting about a certain officer seen on TV, uh, captured and cool. Mm. Charles, this year, I'm yes, sure he was. Yes, yes good. And, and what I would want us to do, mm. the fact that you see me, some of the video, it needs further interrogations. Mm. So I thought the person who did it should have cooperated with the CID to do their work. I, you I saw thought, the I thought that the CID. had said that they, yes. they were requested for the full footage. Yes. And he said he had submitted the same. To the CID or to the uh, uh, OSP. Mm. Because he said he was dealing with the OSP. Right. Okay, but the CID needed it to further their investigation. Mm. So I thought that it wouldn't have been a problem if you had submitted to OSP and mm. then the CID. Let them do the investigations and you have your copy. If somebody decides to tamper with it, you mm. have the original one to come and then nail them, okay? Mm. So let uh, the investigator cooperate with the uh, investigative agency so mm. uh, we can get to the conclusive end. Otherwise, we will just keep hanging somebody mm. uh, when the, the truth is actually okay. uh, not the case. Or it may be the case mm. because you've said something. Okay. Go and nail it and mm. then let the law take its course. So I'm reading on the front page of the, we'll go to the JM, why he's throwing okay. shades. Uh, but the GRA boss says they are raking in 490 million in 17 days and by their projection, they will not lose because they, um, the average is some 800 million, sometimes that they get some 900, some 1.2. And so if they have been able to get 490 in 17 days, the state then is not losing money. But George, now how do we reconcile that with a system that has been criticized by the freight forwarders as being a paper system? when we long have said we're moving away from the paper system into a paperless. I comes Unipass uh, and all of that. Yeah. And where the freight forwarders themselves are complaining 
that it is hampering their job or their businesses and demorages are gathering That's and it. the state is not supporting them. That's How do you get the moral temerity to come and be trumpeting such figures when the people you are supposed to be serving are not happy? Yes, Johnny. Uh, one, the objective of getting these ICOMs and Unipass mm -hmm. uh, is to improve upon revenue collection, right? And to bring more efficiency to the ports. That is the primary objective. So you're moving from GCNet and others, mm -hmm. gradually grading. And mm -hmm. I understand that ICOMs, Unipass is more efficient. Way. I, I, yeah. Well, now I, let me let me I, let me get I, it. I, I, so I'm, I want to sorry. I, I want to know. Um, the last time I spoke with GCNet, they had said that. Their system is an end-to-end, -end, which government told them to do. Their system is ISO certified. Their system is better is that qualified. Is everything done? Is everything Exactly. Done? So, that, so what was wrong with the GCNet and West Blue system? Which we, good. Which if we they've worked for a point and the contract ends and they decide not to renew, I think you cannot hold government to it that uh, you should do that. Mm -hmm. If they think there's more efficient alternative, mm -hmm. uh, government can resort to that. But I agree with the uh, free forwarders and others. I mm -hmm. spoke with a friend who works in there. Mm -hmm. and, and I was told, you know, what you mentioned, the demorish thing mm -hmm. is piling up. It's like yeah. a rent. Yes. You know, it's piling up. That's where. And then, two, they're inconveniencing all the other people, mm -hmm. right? And so I think uh, government through GRE, Finance Ministry, mm -hmm. uh, should, you know, try and resolve these challenges, mm -hmm. even though it may be efficient. The initial implementation and co is becoming challenging, mm -hmm. okay? So let's see how we can get the uh, software developer or the experts therein mm -hmm. to go and then get the people well trained to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. Because as you are saying, we intended to improve on an IT way, right. but now we are resorting to the use of paper right. and other things right. to get the things mm. moving. Mm. I have heard that there are certain times you go and the thing cannot work, mm -hmm. but there are other times you, an officer can tell you, I can help you get it, and mm. sometimes it works out. Mm. You get it. Mm. And so if it's a deliberate sabotage, let them investigate and see who is doing it. If it's not a sabotage and mm. it's a genuine challenge, let them get the software developer mm -hmm. to come and then uh, resolve that and get the people uh, well trained on how to handle mm -hmm. and use the icons and the unipass so we can and then the last one johnny the gra is saying uh, revenue is gone up mm -hmm. the yes. minority the minority disagrees they say Good. we have lost 100 million well you know but i had within a one week 177 million was uh, gathered right. but if the thing had been smooth, maybe we would have gotten more than We'd that. Actually we actually would have gotten more than that. And so I wouldn't want us. And two, the inconveniencing that is uh, causing the mm. freight forwarders and co must be of concern to all of us, right. especially GRE. Mm. Okay, so I will entreat finance ministry and GRE mm. to take a second look at this whole thing. I'm mm. not saying they should shelve it. No, I don't agree with the people. Mm. They should up it and bring it, you know, the efficiency up and make it smooth to the mm. satisfaction mm. of all the players within the okay. uh, industry. Mm. So we'll all be happy. We get our money. Mm. They also get their job done mm. and their clients are satisfied. But Pastor Charlie, the yes. freight forwarders are threatening that, look, we will, and in fact, the businessmen whose goods are stuck there, who are paying the demorage, extra demorage, say they will pass their cost on to the people of Ghana. Uh, because yes, I mean, they're businessmen. They can't lose. They can only gain. <laughs> what do you say? The George says we are bringing a more efficient system, like ICOMS. <laughs> is, is that the case? What you know, do you see? Johnny, in every policy you take, mm. virtually there's going to be a four point, I mean, link to mm. whatever decision you want to take for the people of this country. Mm. First of all, there's a point of government mm -hmm. in maximizing, I mean, revenue and maximizing profits or whatever you mm. in this whole agenda. There's an institution that's a freight forwarders mm. that are working to also achieve whatever aim they want to achieve. And mm -hmm. then they intend making business mm -hmm. also easier mm -hmm. for these importers and exporters right. and what have you that continuously use the ports. Mm -hmm. So, and then at the end of the day, the Ghanaian people. Mm -hmm. Whatever decision the government takes and all of these mm -hmm. ends up affecting the freight forwarders, mm -hmm. is moved on to the importers or what have you and exporters, and at the end of the day, the Ghanaian people suffer. Mm -hmm. So whatever decision you want to take, you must take into compliance all of these factors. The minority score mm -hmm. that, yes, we are not maximizing revenue, we are not getting enough in our mm -hmm. coffers and mm -hmm. what have you, mm -hmm. is absolutely in the right direction because in the end, you are in government. Mm -hmm. Whatever revenue we get from some of these things come into your coffers. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it is your sole responsibility to utilize some of these things to the benefit of the Ghanaian people. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when you continuously do propaganda with whatever the minority says, mm -hmm. you would go to parliament and you read the revenue shortfalls 
in the year. And it has happened. Since mm -hmm. 2016, you took over. You come in the, in the media space, you tell us that, yes, we are maximizing a lot, we are receiving a lot, we have achieved this in a week, this in a month. Then you get to parliament and you tell us that there are some revenue shortfalls. I think some of these things ought to be investigated. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you continuously peddle some of these things in the media space, we are achieving. We are getting 100 million, 100 billion, what have you. Then you come to parliament and you say, we have achieved, so we have gotten some realize some revenue shortfalls and whatever we attained in during the year, then there's that kind of propaganda and, 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 and mix up. So sure. we must step into this. We must resolve these challenges. The Ghanaian people are already overburdened. Mm. There's, uh, there's, there are lots of despair. I mean, you go to Abu Sokai, mm. you go to people who deal in these businesses, and lots of jobs are collapsing. And so in an mm. attempt to move on the cost mm. to some of these businesses, then in the end of the day, I think that you are only <laughs> finally digging the Ghanaian people's graves and burying us uh, at the long run. So step into it. These issues must be resolved. The minority is raising very critical points in this mm. matter. Mm. And I mean, they must be adhered to and then complied with to the benefit of the people. Okay, let's go to Etnam for some messages. When we come back, we'll talk. We'll ask why JM is throwing shades and we'll look at the MPP's uh, forthcoming primaries. Uh, already, I've heard people say that some persons held juicy positions in the past. So, <laughs> so they are better placed. Etnam, welcome. All right, good morning. Let's do a few of your messages this morning. Um, Kwame Na Obanzi from East Legon. I'm asking, will we pay classes when we reopen school? The GHS students. Good uh, morning, Johnny. Extra classes. Yes. It doesn't want to go to school. <laughs> Good morning, Johnny. Please tell the EC to pay us our allowance oh. for the district assembly election before embarking on another exercise. Some of us have not been paid. We should. Uh, we need this money. Thanks. John from Aplau. Good morning to you, Johnny Etonam and Bella. We give glory to God Almighty for his love and mercy upon our lives to see a new day like this. Today is my birthday. My children will be anxious to hear you wishing me happy <laughs> birthday because my TV station has been glued with TV3 alone from Theophilus Amaki Sefaji at East Legon, uh, Jen Ayo. Happy birthday to Jen Ayo. Jen Ayo. Jen Ayo. <laughs> yeah, Jen Ayo. The world we did. So okay. happy birthday to you. Yeah, happy birthday to you, uh, Theophilus. Good morning, Johnny. Help me wish my husband, Stephen Owu, a happy birthday. I pray mm. for more better days ahead for him. Love from your wife and daughter, Central Region Apam. Good morning, Johnny. It's disgusting to see NCC today in my community in Ho around 4.45 a.m. announcing about COVID-19 with a megaphone which cannot reach 10 meters. Ask Information Minister what they are using Ghana's money for. Apostle from Ho Deme. Good morning, TV3. Loving the sacrificial work of yours. Keep it up. Solomon Zigla at Tamale. Hey, the police officer from the Nima police says this is not robbery because there were not, no weapons or tools involved. Ghana is so cool. Good morning, Johnny. This is a gadfly from Kukuren to me. Johnny, the NDC should spare us of their cacophonies. They, have us, uh, they behave as if giving the mandates, they will do something extraordinary. We're all not uh, in this country when we witness eight years of a small administration during the, uh, their tenure. They should give us a break and allow the competent to rule. <laughs> Please tell President Nanado that men's good customers are weeping, so he should he not let bad. Namwan be walking in his house freely. Uh, I.J. Ganu. Good morning. We need leaders, not politicians. Hello, my name is Ella from Ashiye. I was wondering whether it was mandatory for the people being evacuated to be quarantined in a hotel. Can't some be quarantined in their homes depending on how big or suitable it will be? Some people have the means of being quarantined in their homes and I feel this should be taken into consideration in order to save costs. John Naporo in Salaga North. He says, Johnny, greetings. Uh, he says, greetings to the people's voice, Malik Basintale. God bless him. Good morning, Johnny. Please tell Basintale uh, that the people of Savannah region are watching. Basintale. Okay, good morning, uh, Johnny. Please tell Basintale that the people of Savannah region are watching the way he's articul he is articulating issues from Akilu Sola. Good morning to you all. The bus's inability to struggle or struggle to observe the protocols as a result of cost of production, that is fuel prices, spare parts, and maintenance. Why hasn't government reduced fuel prices since the whooping reduction from world market? I believe that drivers and car owners have endured 
and sacrifice enough. Government should just reduce cost of fuel and other commodities which affect their work from Atosa. Good morning, Johnny. Thank you so much for your relentless voluntary campaign. It goes to buttress the perception held by majority of Ghanaians that we elect leaders who are inward looking, serve their interests to the total neglect of the ordinary poor citizen. Official Dom coerced the poor trotro and taxi drivers and same lets the rather luxurious long state owned buses to carry passengers over and above the presidential directives relating to social distancing. The police only unleash their powers on trotro and taxi drivers and allow Metro Mass VIP buses to go unchecked. Equal rights and justice. Thank you, Johnny, for your efforts. Teacher Kweku from Asin South. This one says, Johnny, tell the MPP man even if uh, excavators can get missing, then cocaine is very small to get missing. <laughs> Under the Nana <laughs> <Dose> regime, <laughs> President uh, Perez from Spintex. Johnny, you see how animal farm governance is being practiced here in Ghana. Trotros, taxis, and other private transport operators have been pressed to reduce the number of passengers in order to promote uh, social distances, which even cost their income. Yet they adhere to, but government uh, transport operators don't observe such protocols and the leadership look unconcerned. What kind of governance is this? Can we fight COVID-19 with this attitude? My name is Afrakumaba uh, Nanakwame in Japan from uh, Banku. Let me take uh, this one. Good morning, Johnny. Great campaign there. I think we are losing the fight against this virus. A lot of people in town use the face masks only when they see security officers, drivers and conductors. Don't use the mask at all. It's very worrying. We need more education and more education. Steve uh, Lapaz. Good morning, Johnny. I humbly think the leadership of Metro Mass must be punished to serve as a deterrent to others. State-owned organizations should be the last to disrespect presidential directors. Indeed, all state institutions should be uh, an epitome of good behavior to others when it comes to respecting laws of this country. Jibril Yusif Shari. Okay. Uh, from town. Let me take a very last one, Johnny. Good morning, please. I'm in the Eastern region, and I want to let you know that education on COVID is not encouraging at all because most of the church that I have been boarding, uh, passengers don't wear the mask mm. and the social distance to not working at all. So the president should rather focus on the education and stop listening to people who stay indoors with him for advice. Okay. Raymond sent that from Sonia. Thank you. We'll Thank you. Here. Thank you very much. Uh, Tale, yesterday, mm -hmm. President Mahama, ex-President Mahama was uh, throwing shades at the government and, and raising certain issues. Somebody would ask, we are in a difficult moment. Why is he busy throwing shades? I mean, Thank you. I think that yesterday what happened mm -hmm. is something that is well known to the Ghanaian people already. He spoke virtually about COVID-19 mm -hmm. and simply could not understand mm -hmm. how, why the government is relenting on, I mean, implementing lots of things that ought to have been done by now. For example, he did not understand why, I mean, frontline workers, why contact tracers mm -hmm. were attempting to strike and some were still living striking. Mm -hmm. He did not understand why lots of hospitals, chip compounds he had put up, and Onyado, mm -hmm. I mean, vans that should have been in the communities and working and what have you, had been left to rot. He did not understand why there was a partisan distribution of food that, I mean, was caught in broad daylight and videos were taken and circulated. He could not understand why more than $34 million was signed by parliament and given to the team. $200 million was taken from a stabilization fund and capping it to about 100 million. And what have you, additional contributions like car power donating 300,000, Malcolm donating 100,000, I mean, Christ Apostolic donating, I mean, lots of donations mm -hmm. that came in still could not meet the demands of the Ghanaian people for just common PPs. He simply could not understand because as of now, President Mahama had to take money mm -hmm. from his accounts he had to buy PPs, he had to supply hospitals, I mean, with water, with sanitizers, with, I mean, lots of these protective, I, I mean, instruments. Mm. And till now, the government of the day is unable to satisfy these demands from hospitals. Can they, mind can, can they come mind and do you. it all? I mean, why can't you? Mind you, Johnny, we have hospitals. Mm. Today, the only disease in existence is not COVID-19. Right. We have other diseases. Mm. And people go to hospitals in the name of malaria, and at the end of the day, they test positive for COVID-19. Mm. Imagine a health worker 
where you are in your hospital, somebody comes with symptoms of malaria, mm. you test the person and at the end of the day, after samples are taken, the person is COVID-19 is COVID positive. It means automatically that if you are not prepared mm. with some of these PPEs, automatically you have a higher chance of being infected. Mm. So these were the concerns raised by President Mahama. And I think they are in the right direction. Everybody wants to unite in resolving this menace. Everybody wants to unite in fighting this. Mm. He raised other critical points. And I think it was also in the right direction. Mm. Like, like for example, mm. He did not understand mm -hmm. why the MPP mm -hmm. were simply trying as much as possible to debate what had been a promise mm -hmm. to a vision. And he simply did not understand. And then he quoted, he said that when failure stares you in the face, <laughs> that is where you begin to, to distinguish between what is a promise and what is a vision. Mm -hmm. In the end of the day, if you claim that modernizing agriculture was a vision, mm -hmm. automatically, if, if, if you achieve it, it becomes a promise. Mm -hmm. And so we listed 631 objects mm -hmm. in our last press conference and asked you mm -hmm. to point to us which one was you claimed was a vision and which one you claimed was a promise mm -hmm. and, and, and what have you. Because it, it, there were things we simply did not understand. Then he moved further to give alternatives. And he told the people of this country that when given the next opportunity, he was going to implement things like, he said, the Onipanuya, mm. where fishing mm. communities, water communities, were also going to get, I mean, some of these healthcare facilities. Because you know that these Onipanuya do vans, yes, if he, some water communities he recently visited on boats, you remember, mm. vehicles do not go there. So he would implement the Onipanuya to be using these water bodies to sites and farms where people need a lot of these health cares. He also spoke about the university, public investment Pre bill. President, I mean, President Mahama was not happy, yeah. for example, that uh, student leaders, captains of business and industries would go to the Flagstaff House or Jubilee House and what he calls praise singing for the president. They are speaking their honest truth. Why does he think they are singing the praise of the president? I mean, it, I, I, I watched the figures today. Mm. And I realized that on a daily basis, the numbers keep increasing at, a, at an increasing rate. Today, we are almost hitting 13,000. And people go to sit there and say, President, you have done well. What has, what has, what has been done about this whole thing? Mm. When numbers are reaching 3,000, mm. I mean, was it not the same Ghana Health Service that mm. told us we had peaked some time back, you remember, mm. when we had about 600 and something cases? So why, is the number, why are the numbers still increasing? People go to the presidency and praise him, student leaders. Go to sit there and sh and praise him when because they are satisfied still with what the do not have done. access to PPEs. Heads of Ghana Health Service. And are you saying their leadership, the leadership of the students I mean, are yeah. not are not in touch with their students? And of absolutely. If you are in touch, you would have known the plight of the Ghanaian students. People from the health facilities go to sit there and praise President Akufuado. Then the next day, you hear that contact tracers want to go on strike. People from security services go to sit down there and praise him. You have done everything. You've done well. Then the next day, you hear that sixty policemen have been infected. So their men have been infected. People do not have PPs. People from, I mean, selected people from industry go to sit down and praise him. Oh, you've done everything. Then the next day you hear that the same companies are laying off workers. So what are the praises for? Rather sort of team up with him, mm. give him alternatives, tell him to listen to the calls from opposition leaders and what have you, to take off his political lenses and what have you, okay. and accept these calls. I mean, President Mahama suggested some mm. time back that some of our okay, Senate contributions, wrap up, wrap up mm. that some of our Senate contributions must be given to depositors, right? Yes, it's, People, it's, it's against the law. That's what Senate said. I mean, everything is against the law unless you go to Parliament to amend it. Everything is against the law. Some of the laws that are taken to Parliament today, including CIS and what have you, are they not going to Parliament for amendments? So every law can be taken for an amendment. And President Mahama said, take it there, amend it, give Senate contributors part of their donations. They came out. They brought Senate contributors to the Flagstaff House, Senate heads, to come in and attack. Hey, it is not done. It is not this. It is not this. Then people came out to tell them that, look, it can be done. You must take it to Parliament. You amend it and give us contributions. So these are some of the things President Mahama okay. has been speaking about and what have you. And I think that, Johnny, mm -hmm. if these things are adapted, mm -hmm. if President Mahama for just a minute, mm. takes cognizance and listens to what President, President Mahama keeps on telling him every day, mm. we wouldn't be where we were today. Huh. George, President Mahama certainly is not happy with President Akufuado, who has handling a lot of issues. He says uh, <laughs> there are praise and worship singers who come and come to the Jubilee House selected. to sing his praise. <laughs> selected. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't hear selected, mm. but... Um, I'm George, amending it. <laughs> uh, Johnny. George, yes. what, what do you say? Is President Mahama on the right track? What do you expect from him? <laughs> he's desperately in need of uh, power again. Mm. And he's going to do anything to run down uh, his opponent, uh, his, his, his biggest obstacle, the very incompetent performing president, Anadu Dankwe Kufuado. Mm. Uh, and so what else do you expect? Johnny, I don't know if yesterday, uh, ex-president John Mahama, His Excellency, had the guts 
to speak about the Airbus saga. Mm. Up to now, he hasn't <laughs> coughed about I, I, it. I thought, I thought you said you were investigating it. <laughs> the government no. said he was investigating so, it. I'm I'm he, 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 it. He, I don't know if he has the guts to have a Facebook live on the Airbus saga because his name is at the center of the whole thing. Okay? <laughs> did did the investigations the reveal <laughs> that to you? Government also official the, one. The, the, uh, the everything, they, everything you read about the whole thing is, is like an octopus, okay? All mm. leading to the center, the real... <laughs> But, but when is the investigations on that matter? Oh, no, I mean, we are OSP. Though. OSP is working on it. So and he has not finished yeah, the You can talk to you, a media person. You are okay. the mouthpiece of the people. Mm -hmm. So you can talk to OSP. But you don't know if the investigations have been finished or not? No, no, okay. okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. So let's, let's allow the OSP to, to work, do right. mm -hmm. their work. But I thought if he had the guts to have spoken about it. Mm -hmm. uh, he spoke about Unyado. I was surprised. He brought Onyado in. You know. Mm. you know, most of them were grounded. Mm. Eh? The Onyado, mm. even under him, were they working? The moving well, hospitals. The, those moving hospitals. Mm. A lot of them were grounded. <laughs> eh? A lot of ambulances were brought by him, grounded. <laughs> okay? So, I don't know. what can, We all know the level of incompetence that he exuded when he was in He's power. rather pointing incompetence at you. He says, when, yeah. when you are confused, when you are confused, I you, don't worry. You, you mix promise with vision. No, no, I'll come there. I'll come there. We are not, they are mixing promises and mix vision. They are counting. If you have a broader vision, mm. then you zoom in into the individual promises. Our manifesto does that. Mm. If you take our manifesto, alphabetically uh, ordered mm. and then numerical, Roman numerals, to mm. de determine mm. all the promises. So you can easily go and count them. Right. Okay? They are done under the broader vision. If you take agriculture, modernize, make it profitable and cool. Now, how are we going to do that? Then those are the promises there. That is what is done. Okay? But if you say it's going to be profitable, and then we tell you how we're going to do that, mm. and then you are counting and mixing them, that's your own wahala. You get it? We know we've made 388 promises. We have delivered on that, 78%. Mm. Here's this thing. When they did their check, he couldn't even do more than 33% of his promises. Mm. One time premium, what happened to it? Free assets, how did they score it? So we'll get to uh, all those. Everybody matters. will get a bank account. <laughs> how are you yes, done? Oh, good. So great. Every money. police station will get a CCTV camera so that Nima police station will not have uh, <laughs> been burned up. Good. These are ongoing promises. We have six months to the election, right? Okay. So, uh, and, and on the matter of. Rapper for me, you're not yeah. speaking again. Yes. Yes. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the matter, of the, on the matter yeah. of the COVID mm. and co. Look, this president has shown real leadership, mm. okay? And we've seen otherwise, the case would have escalated to okay. a level that all of us will be overwhelmed about. Okay. And so if student leaders praise him, you see, give praise where praise is. I'm not saying okay. people should go praise singing. Okay. But if somebody has done sing, very well, sing your, sing your Washington wife, Post mm, is acknowledged Sing that, your wife's okay? praise because <laughs> she's, she, she's part of 47 women yes, yes, who that, contend that, tomorrow. Yeah, I wish that well. Yes, I, wish, I know she's My, she's my very good be. friend, Philip Landon, is co contesting her. Yes. Uh, and she's my very good friend as well, Lady yes. Bash. So yes. I, I'm not supporting Don't. anybody. Uh, uh, but sing your wife's praise. I give uh, you 30 seconds. Yes. Campaign manager. People of Keep Kusnov, you know, we need to make the right choice. They're very marketable. Oh, I don't know. I issues. Uh, <laughs> we need a marketable candidate uh, to be able to retain the seat for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was challenging. The NDC had taken the seat. Uh, the Honorable Barbara has come to, to wrestle it back for us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's give her another opportunity to do more uh, to help us. Uh, she is the front runner anyway. Okay. Uh, your friend, oh. uh, I wish uh, Honorable Philip London uh, all the best. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Malik Basintale is a Savannah Regional Communications Officer of the NDC. And also, uh, George AEC is an uh, official campaign manager for his wife. And he's the NADMO PRO. Uh, thank you very much.